hey, everybody, how are you going? Uh, it's been a little while between drinks, but we're back for another Write the Docs podcast again. Um, and it's great to be here. It's great to be back. It's good to talk about docs. And uh, with me today is some other people who like to talk about docs as well. So let's run through. First of all, we'll go with our regular, uh, regularly scheduled presenter, and that would be Chris Ward. Hello, Chris. Hey. And as we were saying before we start the show, we're all in mood lighting. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, we do. It is that the time mood of day lighting. Is. <laughs> but we, we, because Tom is joining us today, we, we are all in either early morning or very late evening time zones today. So, <clears throat> yes, it is, a, it is a mood light edition. So what's been happening, Chris? What's been going on? It's, I've been busy. It's been good, actually. I've had lots of work stuff. I just got back from the Prague conference, which we'll come to shortly. Um, yeah, things are good. Things are good. Summer is, I think we had the, uh, last good day of the year today. <laughs> last good day. Yeah. It's like 25 day. degrees, which for late September is not too bad. Uh, and I think that was probably the last good one. <laughs> right. Now we descend into darkness for three months. D- darkness. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's a problem we don't have in Australia. <laughs> You know, it's basically light all the time. Yeah. Um, speaking of Australia, we've actually got a uh, a special guest from Australia today joining us. It's uh, Swapnell. Hello, Swapnell. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Chris. How are you going? Oh, pretty good. Yes. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. And as Chris pointed out, we're actually moving from darkness into light a little bit. But with Melbourne, you never know because you've always got... Um, interesting patterns. You've got light and you've got dark and you've got storms and everything happening within a couple of hours. So. It's four yeah. seasons in one day. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I've actually, yeah. I was actually somewhat disappointed when I left Melbourne and knew that that was what the, the uh, song was based on, that no one really knows the song outside of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we haven't actually told you what that song is. It's Crowded House, um, New Zealand four seasons Australian in one band. Day. Mm. Yeah, describing yeah. Melbourne, Hang on, I've just adjust the cable. There we go. Right. Um, yeah. And Melbourne is literally like that. <laughs> Although yeah. Berlin this summer has become like Melbourne. Um, oh, really? Not quite as extreme, but um, not, not, variable not, weather. Not as reliable as it used to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, before we get talking on the weather, <laughs> we should probably be here the show. Yeah, um, that's right. Well, yeah. we could talk about the weather all day. So what, <laughs> yes, we do have a show uh, to do. Jared, how how have you been? I think you have some. Um, some oh yes, I've I've been I have been well. Um, I've been working on restoring more pinball machines. I've got three to do now because um, I got rid of Star Race, and uh, that's that is keeping me busy in between all the other stuff I'm doing. But I'm also uh, transitioning jobs. So I'll be uh, heading off from Credit Sense um, on Tuesday, actually, and then be starting with Squiz um, in a couple of weeks' time, which I'm very excited about. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a change period at the moment for me, but that's good. And it's school holidays here, so I get to spend a oh. bit of time with the kids uh, in between the transition. Where do you keep the pinball machines? <laughs> I I keep. I've, I've only really got room for two, so when I rent, when I do them up, I've, I put them into the garage, and I've got this little little corner that I tuck them into. Um, the thing with pinball machines is when you're not playing them, you can store them on the ends and stand them up, so they, they're quite sort of compact when you're not actually playing them. But unfortunately, when you are playing them, they take a fair bit of floor space. So I'm going to have to work out what I do with that um, later on. That's a problem I can solve. Later on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the thing is, I got three, so I could work that out. I, I could solve that problem, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm going to very quickly recap uh, the prior conference. It just happened. Um, well, it finished on Tuesday. I, I must admit, I think uh, today and yesterday was the um, first day I didn't have the post conference crash. So, so, so tell, tell now, us about this post conference yeah. crash because I hear it a fair bit. Yeah, what is, so, what, so, is that, what is it like? Well, especially this is the second year I've helped organize as well. So, you, the nice thing about the Write the Docs conference, or what more one of the nice things, <laughs> not the only one, um, and, and Swap will probably uh, corroborate this, is that uh, it's usually a fairly positive crowd. 
Um, and especially for the Prague one, you spend sort of three and a bit days in a very sort of positive, like nice uh, people kind of encouraging space, which is good. And then you go back to reality. <laughs> and, it's like, oh. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a real kind of crash ground down to the ground. And they usually spend about two to three days and it's feeling really, really depressed. <laughs> <It's the same. laughs> so, yeah, I always but, feel like they should have some sort of like recovery kit in your welcome pack to sort of get you well, through the, the crash period. We have, we now I've discovered because I wasn't able to stay. Uh, so there's usually a train um, at 4.30 on the last day of the conference back to Berlin. So I usually leave. So I haven't stayed for like the after organizers dinner, which I oh. stayed for this year. And they call it the zombie dinner because everyone's just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but actually I found the morning far worse than the evening. <laughs> so, so. Anyway, that's just behind the curtain a little bit. Um, yeah, I got the boat this time, this time as well, which is actually the, the first time I made it. Um, and I discovered that the, uh, the river in Prague has a lot of locks. So we spent a lot of time sat at locks, which, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a thing <laughs> but the, the conference that, itself yeah so. yeah yeah and uh what? writing day was good actually we tried some slightly different things very actually it was pretty big pretty busy um mm-hmm. interesting this year that we mostly had uh, all existing projects which was different usually lots of people start new things as well um oh, like a, a so we had carryovers to, Say it again. So you sort of had so you sort of had carryovers coming into the show. This is often the thing that um, sometimes you know people work on something and then nothing really continues. But these were all pre-existing projects. Um, oh. so that's good. Um, apart from one which was a kind of a metric style uh, project, and the guy who was running it had an, a massive group of people and somehow managed to keep them all motivated for an entire day. <laughs> Which was quite wow. amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> so that was good. Um, main conference was good. I think it's the the biggest in Europe. Um, it pretty much taken the venue to capacity. I had to do some reorganizing to fit everybody. What's the What's the size of the uh, attendees? <laughs> oh, uh, RSV. Uh, so attendees was about three fifty. Um, That's a huge crowd. <laughs> <laughs> the the venue is a little is a little flexible <laughs> with, with with numbers. We kind of jig things around a bit this year. Some were right. and didn't talks. Say yeah. you know the usual kind of um, uh, schedule of talks you get from um, from um, the right to docs conferences. Lots of case studies. Um, I think one of ones stood out for me. Um, I really like the first one uh, from Kayla Lee. The super effective writing process of Grammy winning artists. Um, <laughs> Kayla used to work in a, a Grammy recording artist studio. Oh. <laughs> I was comparing technical writers to Grammy award winning artists. So, okay, all right. That's a spin. We'll go with it. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Um, there was something that stood out for me. Um, the problem is when you're working, you sometimes don't. <laughs> you're, sort of, you're often like so focused, you're, you're not always completely listening. Um, yeah, because you were on the socials this year, weren't you? So you're sure, I did the, the writing stars. day as well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jen Lamborn was back. I don't think she's in Australia yet, but she works for the UK government um, and her talk I've is very well I've seen some of her talks. They're very good. But she's yes. now actually leaving the UK government and going to a fintech. So <laughs> very different. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, I found actually there was a talk from a woman from Nepal, which was actually interesting to get someone from a very different sort of place. Mm. Um, And actually the closing talk um, from Zachary, Sarah, called, I think I have pronounced his last name, Kulisan, who works for Kubernetes, talking about their translation efforts. Because I'm actually going through translation efforts myself continuously on open source projects. So that was kind of interesting too. Mm. Uh, and we also had the, uh, I don't know if you caught the video from last year, but we had the uh, second coming of the, the impromptu um, acapella group. No, I've got, to, I've got to find that video. I've it's, on, it's, that on the, uh, it's on the Slack. <laughs> oh, it, it is. I was up the front video. It was uh, sung to the tune of 500 Miles by the Proclaimers. 
Um, <laughs> one that's of, one of the best pub songs ever, that one. One of the you organizers can... is Scottish too. So he was like, oh, that's basically our unofficial national anthem. So. <laughs> I was going to say, it would be, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing better than having a few too many beers and screaming that out at the pub when it comes on. Yes. And, and that said, the, the party was also fun. Um, Prague is a lot cheaper than Sydney. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, so I bet. A tab goes and the beer is further. amazing. The beer yeah, is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the temp goes a lot further in Prague than it does in Sydney and Melbourne, I think. Oh, for so, sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. So all in all, good. No no real dramas. Um, good stuff. Um, yeah. we. I would yeah. I would personally love to get to a Prague conference, like one of those ones, the big Euros, because they're, they're, they're so very different to the, the scale of conferences that mm. we have down here. Mm. Which actually leads us into um, <laughs> uh, quite nicely. Uh, Why do we the, have uh, Swap <laughs> Yes, that's exactly right. It leads us into um, why we've actually got Swap on because Swap announced something recently that uh, I think is pretty exciting. You want to tell us a bit more about that, Swap Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so Australia is having its third Ride the Docs conference this year. So we started off pretty small. We started off with a one day sort of an event in 2017 and um, there was a full two days conference last year in Melbourne, but we've just, we've done, well, the dates have been announced for the this year's conference about four months back. Uh, we've just finished the um, CFP process. We've um, selected the speakers. So the list of speakers and the talks are now on the Write the Docs Australia conference website. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's a very interesting mix of um, speakers and talks this year. So we, last year we went with the traditional talks and a and couple of workshops. So this year we decided to just sort of mix things around a little bit. So we don't really have an additional third day for writing really, but we thought we could put in some elements of those writing of the of a writing day into the schedule if we could. So we had we. So to be honest, when I actually put out the forms for proposals, I was I was I wasn't sure. I put in something called as a doc fix it, which is a mini version of a doc sprint or a, even a full full fledged writing day. So it's it's more like if you've got a project and you think we can try and if uh, we can get a bunch of documentarians together and see if we can hash out some of the documentation that's required on a project. So we just thought we could have a doc fix it project. So we've put it out there and we've actually found two really solid doc fix it projects that we can that people who attend the conference get to work on so they can choose what project they want to contribute to or they can bring their own projects um during that time if so it's like a mini version of a writing day what chris pointed out but we've got two doc fix it projects we've got a couple of workshops over the two days and we've got about 12 presentations, so it's pretty exciting because even if looking at it from a participant viewpoint, so even if I leave aside my organizing hat, it's, it's just a very full pack schedule and there's so much to learn um, this year at the conference. This is just coming in and yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a very busy schedule this year because <clears throat> I know what it was like last time, you know, being the MC and everything, it was, yeah. it was packed. Like there was a lot going on last year. Yeah. But this year, it sounds like it's next level, next level business. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what the fix it projects are yet, or are you, you? I'm not seeing the details. I don't know if you don't want to say what they are yet, or. <laughs> oh no no look, we can, it's on the website. I just haven't uh, we haven't finalized the schedule yet. So on the website under the schedule you'll, or the talks, you'll probably see a couple of projects there. One, one of them is the um, the good docs project that Cameron mm-hmm. Shorter started mm-hmm. off. So. He's Australian based and he runs a lot, he works on a lot of open source projects. So what the Good Docs projects is, it's about creating, um, I guess, best practice guidelines for different kinds of documentation. So surprisingly, we don't really have one central repository of if you're creating a user guide, this is like a best practice example. If you're creating API docs, this is you know a template you can follow. So the Good Docs project is about creating all these different templates, which can be used, applied to any sort of documentation. So we're trying to get in as many cases as we can, but 
Um, so Cameron will be there. He'll be talking more about the project itself, but um, you can all contribute, come in and um, put your, you know, collective um, wisdom together and try and create best practice templates for different kinds of documentation. So that's one of the projects. The second one is um, the Kubeflow um, open source documentation. So that's something Sarah Maddox at Google has been working on actively. And she had a doc sprint recently, I think a couple of months back. So it's it's a Kubeflow. You can contribute to some of the issues that they've got on their um, Trello boards. And I think Sarah is probably the best person to um, explain all of that, but we, you can contribute to the Kubeflow open source documentation as well. So the, those are the two doc fix -it projects we've got this year. Um, but like I said, if someone wants to come in and wants to, you know, have similar to a writing, they bring their ideas and wants help on a open source documentation project. Um, yeah, they can pitch in their ideas on the day and we'll see if we can fit that in. So Swapnil, does that sort of replace the unconf that we had last year at Write the Docs Australia or is that supplemental too? It is supplemental too. So we've got, still got space for the unconference. So let's say someone doesn't really want to be involved in any of like the writing activities. They can. We've still got separate space where um, we can have unconference topics, and it runs in parallel after lunch on both the days. So we've still got the unconference happening as well. So there's, like I said, there's a lot happening this year. Actually, we're trying to keep it a little bit simple, but it looks like people have contributed so many um, fantastic ideas and. Um, talks and present workshops. I, I just couldn't. We just couldn't just let them down. We just thought we, we should get everything happening. It sounds a little <laughs> bit like a case of let the people set the pace. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I actually, uh, as well, I'm just looking down the um, the the list. I'm always fascinated that I sometimes see people popping into this community that I knew from previous lives, like Alec Clues, who I knew from. Whew, I don't know. I knew him from something back in Melbourne years ago. <laughs> I think the Makerspace um, community. Anyway, um, but a lot of the speakers' names are relatively new to me. So I wonder, uh, I recognise um, Becky, who we've had on the podcast, mm -hmm. is not a local. But how many are local versus from overseas? So I think there's a good mix this year. We've got about 50-50. So we've mm -hmm. got about 50% speakers that are still based in Australia, um, but we've also got people from this year from US, we've got a couple of speakers from Europe, mm -hmm. um, from India, Vietnam, and also, uh, yeah, I think that's mostly the mix. It's it's like a 50-50 mix of okay. people from everywhere who, who are coming in and, yeah, setting the pace like Jared mentioned for the conference. Mm -hmm. and were you going for any overarching themes or... Um, does it, yeah, are you going for any overarching themes or just kind of what people propose? Yeah, so this year, so I guess this year I wanted people to just contribute their ideas. There was not not a specific theme in mind. We were just wondering what, you know, if if given a chance, what could people come up and talk about that's relevant to them, that they think is relevant to everyone else or mm -hmm. a, a number of people throughout the, who attend the conference. And I think we, we'll probably see a lot of people returning from last year's conference, but because we've slightly shifted the venue this year, so we've had one couple, the first two in Melbourne, and because this is an Australian-based community, we just thought we should try and this in Sydney this year. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll also get, I guess, new attendees this year. So there was not a specific theme we just thought we'll see what people want to contribute to and what kind of workshops and doc fix it ideas they might have so yeah there we go it's, it's a very broad sort of level of um, topics that we've got this year mm -hmm. i think there's actually quite a large technical writing sort of community established in sydney so I know I know <laughs> that Russell and I were gunning for it to be in Brisbane because you know <laughs> no travel for us, which is quite nice. But I think the the it is it is uh, as we know from running the the uh, the meetups up here, it is a smaller audience up here in Brisbane. So it does make sense to sort of have it in Sydney. That actually, just one more more question, and then we'll we'll. I'd actually like to. I would like to know about the local scene because I'm not a part of it at the moment. Um, mm. Jared, are you uh, MCing? Uh, I know. I don't have the gig this year. 
um, ah. which means that I have to get my tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, no, I think Swatwell's lined up someone else this year um, to MC, which is pretty cool. Well, who, who could replace Jared? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, having said that, Jared has volunteered to be a, uh, to help out with MCing if needed. And we, we, Jared said a very high bar last year with his MCing. I think we, we and we've had two fantastic MCs in the last year. So Nicola yeah. did it the first year and then mm. Jared um, stepped it up again. So, um, so this year we've got uh, another sp- uh, volunteer from Atlassian. Um, mm. And uh, I don't know if I should be probably mentioning all this. I think it's a bit of a surprise element, but yeah, let's just keep it at that. So you've only narrowed it down to a couple of thousand people, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's everything with a twist. (laughs) Everything with a twist this year. Yeah. 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 Cool. So yeah, I would love to hear uh, as the outsider, even though I am actually Australian, even though I've lost my accent a bit. Um, I, ha- I was not doing tech writing really when I was there, so I wasn't. And, and I don't think the even I don't think even write the docs existed as a community when I was first there. Um, mm-hmm. As an outsider looking in, I would like to uh, tell me a bit more about the the scene there. You seem very active, if small. Um, whereas sometimes Europe can be not so active but bigger. <laughs> it's, just a, it's kind of a weird contradiction, but. Yeah, tell me, tell me more about the, the tech writing scene in Australia. Like, how big is it? What sorts of jobs are people usually working on? Are there any patterns that, that, between people and the roles they have? Or is it pretty broad? Like, yeah, give me some, some highlights. Do, do you want to have a go at this, Jared? Oh, Can yeah, start? sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I'll, I'll, from the Brisbane perspective, um, I think we, when we're organising uh, the sessions for our, our meetups here in Brisbane, we're usually averaging around the ten to fifteen people mark, depending on whether we can get a speaker or not on the day. It tends to be, you know, the speakers do bring everyone to the yard, mm. uh, <laughs> but it's funny. It's uh, we found that the I don't know if it's the same in, in Melbourne, Swatmore, well, but the 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 act of finding a speaker to present something it's not easy. Mm. to actually get people to present. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like as technical writers, we, we're often quite good at communicating, but I think taking, doing presentations is next level uh, for some folks. So uh, it can be a bit, a bit challenging to find people to focus the group. But when we do get a good focus in the group, it's usually around 10 to 15 per, mm. per session. Um, and I'm, I'm more, of course, watch the presentation after. Um, as well on on the Write the Docs Australia YouTube channel, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think from the Brisbane scene, we're we're certainly not the same as Silicon Valley. So where mm-hmm. we we don't see the proliferation of of API sort of projects up here in Brisbane, it's still very much the more you know software as a service or SaaS based products up here that are calling for documentarians to come in. I think a lot of the um, the focus up here, certainly for what I've seen, is that when companies are recruiting for uh, documentarians up here. They want the full service documentarians. They mm-hmm. don't want someone to come in and, and just, you know, write the docs. They want someone to come in and set the, essentially the information architecture um, for the business and like help them work out how to get things up online and, and publish and stuff like that. Um, there's a big push towards that here in, in Brisbane at least. Um, yeah, we're we're not seeing those traditional sort of you know um, uh, old school technical writing jobs. Then the funny thing is though, it's not just in IT up here. We've got very different industries up here. We've got um, mining industries that tend to call for for writers up here, and we've got some um, we've got a few military technical writing jobs up here because of Boeing being in Brisbane okay. up here. So there does seem to be a little bit of, of, of that sort of stuff going through, but that's a bit of a specialist um, uh, sort of technical writing team. Yeah. You, you need to have an engineering degree often to actually contribute to the writing there. Um, so, yeah, there, there is a little bit of variety, but it is predominantly software up mm-hmm. here in Brisbane. Mm-hmm. How about what have you found, um, Swapnil? So in Melbourne, it's actually um, largely driven by banks and government and telecommunications. So again, like Jared mentioned, we don't really have a lot of hardcore software spaces down in Melbourne. I think we've got a few 
more sort of big software names like Google and Atlassian based out of Sydney. But down in Melbourne, it's mostly new startups or new um, smaller sort of organizations. But there's a large focus on, or there's a large number of, a lot of work coming out of banks and um, other sort of more regulated industries. So I, I currently work in a space which is, it's like, I like to describe that as a stock market of energy. So it's, it's we, we literally run this market around electricity and gas um, around Australia. So it's very heavily regulated industries down here. So we've got banks, you've got telecommunications, two of the big names um, like in NBN and Telstra. And also we've got the four major sort of banks in Australia that have presence across Melbourne and Sydney. So there's a lot of work in that space. And it's 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 interesting the kind of work that comes out of there. It's not hardcore tech writing, so you're not writing about a software or APIs. Really, it's a mix of you've got a lot of process documentation, so you're writing work instructions and um, just doing process maps for some of the uh, internal and external processes. You you're writing documentation around the actual process as well, so you, you're doing quick reference guides and small internal user guides or wiki pages throughout that sort of space. And then there is also a focus if there's a software component or something that is exposed to your end users, then you're documenting some of that. So it's a mix of everything that when it comes to documentation roles. APIs have only, I guess, started picking up in the last four or five years, um, but you still don't see as many jobs for AP, hardcore API documentation or not the ones that are advertised anyway throughout as much as you would see in maybe Silicon Valley or somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. And do you think that has the, has the scene, or well, the industry, it's probably better than the scene, uh, grown, shrunk, stayed the same roughly, changed? How's it been? I don't know. I mean, Swapnil, I know you've been doing this in Melbourne for a reasonable amount of time. Jared, I'm not 100% sure, up in Brisbane, but... Have things changed very much in the time you've been doing it? Do you want to comment on that first swap rule? Then I'll um, come in yeah. after you. Yeah, so look, I've been documenting for a fair bit of years now, and it has changed to the sense that there's a lot more recognition of documentation or um, appreciation, I guess, of documentation. So over the years, I've had contract roles where I was often the first tech writer or often the first documentation person that has come into their space. So they didn't firstly know what to expect of a tech writer. So there was that sort of, you know, educating bit on documentation. But now there seems to be a far more acknowledgement and appreciation of what tech writers or documentations bring, documentarians bring to the table. So in that sense, it has grown because a, a number of companies that probably haven't technically hired uh writers in the past are now making a pitch for good tech writers to come in and like Jared mentioned out it's not just core tech writing it's also helping them out with information architecture a little bit of content strategy um, and also hard writing for internal and external audiences so in that sense it has grown the number of roles um, I'm not too sure I'm not probably the best person to com comment on that but they seem to be growing in the sense that there's different kinds of roles that are coming into the market. So it's not just hardcore writing. So it's often a mix of systems analysis and business analysis mixed with mm. tech writing. So um, like I said, it could be you're writing around processes as much as you're writing around software or systems themselves. What, what would you think, Jared? Yeah, I think you're right. Definitely on the um, on the insight you gave about you know, sort of the business and analysis side of um, technical writing, I think, that skill set is starting to become more valuable because it flows into you know working out the information architecture. Um, I had to do that at Credit Sense so when I started there. I, I sort of researched what their current backplane of docs was, and then you know worked out what the the changes needed to be made to their docs and how to reorganize them and stuff like that. And that took a lot of consultation, a lot of talking with people, and research and and looking at patterns on other websites. So there's a lot of sort of analysis activity that goes into technical writing now, um, I think, in these sort of organizations that are calling for that. So yeah, definitely, I think the business analyst side of things is is valuable. Um, so if you, if you are wanting to sort of grow as a technical writer, you need to have that sort of extra bit of skill set. Um, 
along with the core, of course, you know, fundamentals of writing and being able to communicate to audiences and, and all that sort of stuff that's sort of like core technical writing competency. So, yeah, I definitely see that as well. So, uh, I mean, interestingly, I think um, uh, maybe as an exception of some of the ones in the bigger American cities, but like the European meetups also sometimes struggle to find um, speakers month in, month out, week in, week out, whatever it happens to be. I mean, it's a niche subject, so there's going to be a limited pool of people. But I remember running meetups um, in Melbourne years ago and having the same problem, and it makes you more inventive from the day zero because you have to be. <laughs> and, then, you know, you have a, a much smaller pool, but you're also you don't have countries right next door to, to bring I can have someone come from the Netherlands quite easily, for example. Um, and I know you've tried a lot of remote meetups and things like that. Um, and how have you found trying just experiments with the meetup format, just to keep keep the momentum going without always having to rely on finding one person to kind of be that linchpin every time? <laughs> so, so I'll go first, Jared. Um, yeah, definitely. With, with the remote meetups, we've found. I think it's they've been quite successful because we've tried a mix of speakers from um, locally and also some from the U.S. And we've just recently had a remote meetup where um, a trainer from Singapore gave us some insights into simplified technical English. So I think remote meetups have worked well because a, they have eliminated the need for everyone to be physically present at one location which was which was i guess not ideal because we really want people to come together and you know have a general chat outside the um, presentations as well but they have worked quite well um but having said that with and you you, you you're right chris it's always trying to find the speakers to talk something about um, around documentation, so it doesn't necessarily have to be about tech writing. It could be how someone solved a particular issue, or it could be just talking about what are the new trends in, let's say, API documentation. Like I said, it's a pretty new area, but the API documentation, like it's not a unique Australian problem, but they've come in thick and fast. So everyone, literally every organization, regardless of the industry, wants an API at this stage. So there's a lot of people who want documentation done around API. So trying to find someone who can talk about what are the new tools of the trade or new techniques that people are using worldwide around API documentation. So it's always hard. So I've been trying to actively try and see if I can seek some speakers outside the tech writing area. So it could be if I attend meetups related to anything tech, so it could be around um, software or it could just be around UX. So trying to tap into their pool of um, current speakers and see if they wanted to come in mm. or invite them to come and talk at our, our meetup. So it's been it's been pretty interesting trying to find speakers, but I think so far we've done well. So I'm not sure what the future looks like, but yeah, it's been it's been pretty interesting trying to go and tap, literally go and push people. Hey, do you want to come in and talk at our meetup and then try and come up with an idea that fits around the model of documentation? So yeah. But yeah, we've had quite a number of weird topics. And Jared, I mean, I know you at the very least up in Brisbane, you have the quite um, quite progressive uh, QIT as well, the university there, the, the like the technical university. I don't know if oh, you yeah, yeah, QIT. Yeah, no, we we haven't actually managed to engage any of the like the graduates or you know people that are working in in those spaces in university. And, you know, it's an interesting point. It could actually be an untapped resource um, for the folks who are actually going through um, mm. their university degrees there and learning some new things. It might actually bring a different perspective to what we're doing in the, I guess, at the coalface. <laughs> so, yeah, it could be something to pursue. In fact, um, we're actually looking for another organiser in Brisbane um, to, um, to help us out. Uh, Russell's been doing a great job, Russell Dickinson, mm. um, at, uh, sort of coordinating and, and, uh, and leading these, um, meetups in Brisbane, but he's had to step away, um, from the job. So yeah, it's, it's me and I'm looking for someone else too. So, uh, yeah, it'd be great to, if someone is listening and, and they want to actually help us out, it'd be really good to get someone else in to, to help uh, bring fresh fresh perspective into yeah. organising the meetups too. Yeah, and have, have a, you both found, I mean, Australia's obviously a, a small 
Oh, well, it's not, it's, it's small population wise, but it's not small geographically, but <laughs> it's um, a small place, but it's usually fairly enthusiastic about things. Um, oh, yeah. There's various reasons for that, but uh, generally, but in kind of what's your feelings on why it, it, you know, it always seems to be a place that punches above its weight with, with most communities um, and seemingly with the, the tech writer community as well. Um, I'm not really certain why we seem to be <laughs> sort of really enthusiastic about things. Maybe it's just the Australian way. I'm not sure. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> we we seem to we seem to um, sort of really get into it. I think it's all about finding the passion for for what you're doing as well, isn't it? With technical writing, if you can find a, a job that you really align with as well, that makes you that flows into everything. Mm. So I think a lot of the folks up here have actually found gigs that they're really passionate about. And that does tend to reflect in the way the community reacts, I think. Um, have, have you found something similar to that too, Swap Mill, or is it a little bit different for you, do you think? Yeah, no, I think uh, yeah, you probably you hit the nail right on the head there. It's just a passion that, you know, and it's just, I've been in Australia for like the last 20 years now, and I've always found it's the Australian way of life. You, you go at things and, you know, you try and, you try and work it out and, I think everything leads into that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It's just um, making sure you're involved in what you're doing, and you know, trying to help out um, where you can. So, I think that's that's the kind of attitude everyone's got to the community, bringing into the community. So, someone's doing a presentation, someone's helping out with something. Even during the conference, we've got a large band of volunteers who are happy to chip in with some of the. Uh, ideas and bring their own sort of flavor to the local community. So it's always good to get get that sort of involvement from everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I mean, just that, just as a kind of a, a measurement stick for you, are there any um, big, sort of moderately well known general tech events that happen in probably in, in Melbourne or Sydney that? Um, I mean, not. <laughs> it would be great if a tech writing conference aimed to, to those kind of numbers, but you know that you could do partnerships with, or could help you in, in, increase the the, the uh, knowledge of write the dogs. Um, I think I remember, like in New Zealand, they have um, what was it web uh, directions? I think or yeah. something like that. Are, are there any other big ones that uh, you could partner with in the future, or? Again, is it the size and location thing is sometimes a limitation? To be honest, I haven't actually, we haven't looked into any of that yet, but I think we're just trying to find our feet in the community. Like we've mm. only pretty sort of, I guess, youngish. Mm. We, not, this is our third year and it's, um, yeah, th this is the third conference, but also we, we with the meetup side, we started off in about 2016. So it's only like three years into it. Mm. So mm. we're trying to find our feet, but Having said that, you, you, the web directions you mentioned, Chris, was an interesting one because I know last year there was like four different streams of tech all getting together in New Zealand and trying to, you know, come up with this one big event. So we don't, I don't quite think we've had anything similar in Australia, but I know the UX um, conferences uh, are yeah, quite a yeah. big hit in Australia at the moment. So the last few years you've seen the UX and the testing conferences, which are, I guess, um, similar sort of events, but they don't, they're not as big as some in Europe where you've got like thousand people, but we, we still have, they, they still see good numbers about mm -hmm. 250, 300 from what I've heard. So yeah, maybe some, that's something we can explore. Um, there's a lot of other tech, general tech events. I know that there's some sort of developer Microsoft conferences that probably a, a bit bigger and I think big data and an analytics conferences are quite a hit at this stage in Australia. I've just been, you know, more the, topic of the month so yeah. sort of thing so um yeah but not not anything in specific to be honest and does australia have um a more traditional uh, tech writers association like the stc or techcom have any of those or is write the docs the only community no we've got the we've got the ASTC, which is the Australian version of the stc they're not directly affiliated with the stc but it's the australian society of tech 
technical communicators which have been around for the last 25 30 years now mm-hmm. i reckon and mm-hmm. they still exist but i don't think they do meetups or, or events on um, a regular scale at this stage um they do have the annual conference mm-hmm. every year and i think they move it around as well so uh, between melbourne and sydney so yeah so that they're still around i i haven't heard any sort of events coming out of that space in the last few years but okay. seems to be right the docs at the moment is more on the leading on that front where you've got events coming break on a regular basis so it's not maybe every month but we've got remote events we've got events across at least the three big cities on the eastern coast mm-hmm. mm. yeah well i guess that's a good point is there anything on the west coast <laughs> <laughs> well look we've tried I've, we've had a an event each in adelaide and both um in the last few years but it just hasn't got the traction that we we thought we it could get um mm. plus i guess we, we've had a couple of remote events which was like it's not a remote event where you've had a speaker from somewhere it was more like a all australian remote event so anyone mm-hmm. from across australia and we try and time it to so that everyone can hopefully make it so um there have been a couple of those events in the last two years we try and get one every year so people from perth and adelaide and you know even hobart and canberra or, and sydney melbourne brisbane they can chip in and we can all do like you know a presentation or a lightning talk so in that sense it's a more remote sort of an effort at this stage we hopefully try and because there's a number of tech writers based out in western australia as well and like jared pointed out they're not necessarily just all software there's a lot of um people in the mining industry and um again finance and some of those areas so hopefully we'll get more sort of events happening there at some mm-hmm. stage as well yeah cool anything yeah. to add to that Jared no nothing nothing to add your honor <laughs> <laughs> all right okay <laughs> I have a anything that's like a gavel here no yeah <laughs> um, uh, and yeah. after the conference is over <laughs> not that you can probably look uh, much beyond it right now but um what's what's next in the plan for the australia community <laughs> it's what was like sleep <laughs> yeah i was just going to say that i'm just going to take my mind off everything write the docs for a couple of months and just you know just totally switch off for some um around summer i just want to enjoy summer at this stage the valid answer yeah. 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 <laughs> i mean it's a tough it's it's been tough last few years because um it's just keeping up the pace of you know making sure people are still involved people are still mm. you know passionate about they want to talk about things around documentation doing the annual conferences um yeah so i've i've got nothing at this stage to offer chris <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> that's fine and actually to be fair I, I've, i've said this i think a few times um well berlin is actually slightly smaller population than melbourne and sydney but we also get um sort of 10 to 20 um attendees as well it's it's not much uh, bigger just because we're in europe um the mm. the last talk that we put out on the recording i think was about 15 16 um some of the ones we did in the past that were broader were probably some of the bigger attendances so it, it's pretty similar i think london mm. maybe has some more but london's a lot bigger of course um mm. so it's not it's not that different <laughs> um we do have the bigger competition with the st but well, not comp- competition isn't the right word with uh, we have a uh, um overlapping events with uh, techcom a little bit who are much more established and active in fact the right. techcom europe event is happening the same time as right the docs uh, sydney unfortunately yeah um, yeah all oh, right i was committed to both and i suddenly realized i couldn't make australia because of it um so and i don't know how big it is it's going to be my first time going to the kind of big one down in, in stuttgart so i'm not sure but um obviously they've been doing events for a long time um so yeah. there is that kind of extra um, party doing some other things um right. but yeah so yeah you're not you're not uh, you just say australia punches above its weight <laughs> um mm. i i would love to this is getting into into a bit of a weird weird topic but hey we're all half tired for different reasons so let's get into yeah, the weird correct. questions 
Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I actually, uh, like, as half English, half Australian, I often write in American English. Um, Australian English is its own special variety as well. Um, what are some of the, the common mistakes? Well, not mistakes, the common um, things you have to forget to, to, you have to unlearn sometimes with uh, often bringing too many Australianisms into your technical copy that may not be that uh, understandable globally. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> have you got anything that jumps to mind at the moment? Because I'm still trying to think. <laughs> um, no, I don't think any of the Australian sort of specific words have crept into my documentation yet because I'm not born and brought us brought up Australian. I'm sort of, you know, migrated here. But having said that, there's been incidences where you write start writing like drafts and things like your AWO and that sort of, you know, <laughs> servo and everything, all those Australian words <laughs> creep in, but <laughs> they haven't crept into a lot of documentation yet, which is, which is I think it's, it's all right. <laughs> reboot yeah. the servo. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, reboot the servo. Kick no, the servo in the guts. Even close, Chris. And... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, most of it probably tends to be the more the Britishisms, like the spellings and things anyway, which are, not yeah. unique to yeah. Australian English. Um, mm. yeah. <laughs> I was listening to an episode of Grammar Girl where she was talking about the uh, the British versus US English, and it was quite in interesting in the fact that we need to have a the, talk on that one day. We need to have a guest. Yeah, we, we do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mignon Fogarty would be a very interesting person to have on the show, I think. Yeah. But uh, she she does have her own podcast, though, so you can definitely check that out. I've been gorging <laughs> on her episodes recently. Very, very good. Yeah. Mm. I, I think, actually, for me, uh, as a kind of hybrid, uh, the general differences were often pronunciation, not written. Um, my wife is 100% Australian, and we still joke at each other's pronunciations on some words. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so that's that's probably the uh, still the biggest uh, the biggest one. Um, well, um, any uh, any any further comments you want to add on the uh, conference itself? Um, Swap now. Um, tickets, encouragement to bring people a long way over. Um, actually, bizarrely, <laughs> I may encourage him to come. So. A couple of years ago, we actually had, uh, he's an American guy, um, uh, spoke at one of our Berlin meetups. He writes role play games. Um, mm. And we actually had him come and talk about writing role play games because it's kind of structured writing. Well, not, not as rigid as tech writing, mm. but you have to confirm to conform to rules and things like that. And he is actually coming to speak at um, some, some role play conference about the same time <laughs> as Write the Docs. So maybe I should yeah. encourage him to come along. Um, that would be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't clash completely, it's in. Oh, actually, I think the conference is in Melbourne, unfortunately. But maybe oh. he will spend some time in Sydney. But I could uh, encourage him to come along because, um, as you, as people may miss who aren't in the Southern Hemisphere, that's what Mill did say. It's actually beginning of summer, so <laughs> so there's often mm. lots of other things happening. It's not yeah. like November in the Northern Hemisphere where everything starts to close down. It's actually quite a busy time. So there's yeah. other reasons you could come to Australia. So, um, yeah, um, how can people get involved still? Swap? Yeah, look, so the tickets are on sale. They've always been on sale. I think a lot of people try and wait until the pub, at least the speakers have been announced or a schedule has been announced. So the, we haven't actually released the schedule yet, but it will be up in a couple of weeks. Um, but um, the tickets are available. There's there's limited, I guess, when I say limited, we've got a capacity that we're looking to fill in because um, the space that we've got is a heritage listed space in um, Sydney, but it's a pretty unique space. And I'm, mm. I'm sure everyone will love that space because I've been there a couple of times just to recce and everything. And it's just a very different twist on things for a conference. So there, there have been other conference there, but I don't think there have necessarily been a documentation conference there, which is, which is interesting. <laughs> so... Um, so the tickets are available. We're looking for volunteers as well. So if, if there's a on the current on the website, there's a list of volunteers that we are volunteering roles that we're looking to fill in. Um, and it's mostly, I guess, a mix of things. So we've got we still need people around lightning talks and unconferences and um, just you know trying to if if you're local to Sydney, we're trying to find someone who can you know 
um, be someone like on the welcome wagon. So mm-hmm. people have questions around what to see around Sydney if it's their first time in Australia generally or even in Sydney. What, what are some of the things you can check out in Sydney around that time? Um, so we've got a page at the moment which lists a lot of this, so um, which is good, which is a good start. But I think just if you wanted to chat to someone around Sydney, that's we, we'd definitely like some help there. But there's a few other roles, mix of things that we, we're looking to fill in. We've got some great sponsors again this year who've come on board from last year. So Google and it um, have come back and we've got a couple of new sponsors this year as well. Um, and they actually reached out to us the moment the uh, conference was announced. So that's, that's always good to see that people are aware of the conference itself and they're, they're happy to jump on board as a sponsor and bring their, you know, um, knowledge to the conference. So, yeah. So. Nice. Um, and we actually, I think we forgot to mention the dates. It's the um, 14th and 15th of November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sydney. That's right. I was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned the it's in the old police museum, isn't it? Yeah, it's a police and justice museum, and just um, and justice. just a block. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we, we could have some arguments around that, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just a block away from Circular Quay, which yeah, is like which is the right in the harbour. Tourists, so, yeah, right, right yeah. At, alongside the harbour. Yeah. Love I would it. always recommend, my favourite thing about Sydney is you can get ferries like public transport, like in New York, anywhere. Yeah. Um, go mm. across to Cocteau Island or to one of the other posh beaches on the other side of the harbour, stuff like that. Yeah. Pretty easy from that venue as well, I imagine. And right yeah, near absolutely. the uh, Botanical Gardens, I guess, as well. Yeah, it's yes. right, the Botanical Gardens is just a, I think, 10-minute walk away from That's there. a good yeah. spot. It's actually a very good spot. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, right. um Apart from that, as I say, we're in the Northern Hemisphere, things are slowing down for the year. So the only other kind of big event on the calendar there is not until May. So so, so we won't really talk about that too much. Um, Jared, Tom and yourself and I have been discussing our next guest. Uh, I can't remember, can you remember the subject? It's vanished from the Slack history. It was quite a subject. Can you remember off the top of your head? Oh, no, I can't actually remember off the top of my head. It's uh, kind of arranged for some time. (laughs) Yeah, we, we have been. Yeah. Um, no, I can't remember the next topic. It's going to be a surprise. It's going to be a surprise to, to all of us because it's better. Yeah, that's right. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll all have those. to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in the meantime, as we did with the Berlin event, I hope the sound wasn't too bad. I had some microphone issues trying to get it right for the first time. If you want to record any of your meetups, we'll be happy to publish them. Sometimes, as you know, with meetup organizers, it's also not always so easy to get people together even on a, on a podcast so um that's right life gets in the way so if you want to record one of your meetups and send us the audio we'll we'll uh, get it up on the on the podcast feed too in fact that would be great to have different voices from different places not just us um, yeah that's ab- absolutely it. um and of so, course you know yeah. the invitation's open as well that if you'd like to be on the show get in touch with us because you know it's great to have different voices from all around the world on the show um and uh, giving your perspective on technical writing from where you're, where you're from. So get in touch on Write the Docs Slack. Uh, not Write the Docs Slack. Oh, yeah, it is Write the Docs Slack um, <laughs> in, 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 the, in the podcast channel. And, um, yeah, just uh, let us know you're interested and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. And whilst uh, Jared was saying that, I was hastily bringing up the webpage for the podcast. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I've already done that because <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> so you could also find uh, previous episodes and more information on podcast.org. Um, the uh, email is actually podcast at gmail.com. Maybe we should uh, try and get an official email address. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you reckon we can swing them? I don't know. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, and you can find information about the hosts and previous guests too um, and ways to subscribe and some recommendations for other podcasts as well. Um, mm. I don't think we have – there's obviously lots of meetups coming up. I, I can't pull up a full list right now. Um, I know for one, Berlin is not going to happen for another month or so because actually the last one was during the prior conference, so it didn't happen. And then right. the next one, I'm actually going to be on a work trip um, elsewhere. So it may not happen for a couple of months, um, but it will happen again soon. Um, any any um, 
meetup announcements for Australia in the meantime, or is the conference the next thing, I guess? I think Brisbane is well overdue for actually organizing one, but we're just, um, get, we need to organize the organizers first before we can get another one spun up. Life is hard. Life is hard. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But yeah, we'll we'll be doing one for sure. We just need to work out venues and stuff. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll get onto that and uh, see if we can get Brilliant. one get one going again for Brisbane. And in the meantime, Swap Neil, is there any way uh, you would like people to get in touch with you personally about um, anything? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look, they can get in touch with me through the Slack channel. I'm pretty active on the Slack channel in Australia and a few other sort of channels on Ride the Docks. Um, or you can just drop me an email at the Australia at write the docs.org email address. And yeah, that should come, come in through to me. Um, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to mention was we haven't got any meetups planned at Melbourne, Sydney at this stage, but there might be a couple either, or at least one of them in Sydney or Melbourne. We've got a speaker traveling from overseas around those dates. So I'm just trying to work out what, what fits in best with her plan. So mm-hmm. yeah, stay tuned. It'll be up on the, uh, meetup page and also through the Slack channels. Yeah. Brilliant. Cool. Okay. There's only one last thing to say. And I think always think Jared says it best. So yes. Remember docs or it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs>